I've been painting for a long time, but there's always room to grow, and setting oneself a challenge now and then is a terrific way to learn and improve. Let's take a look at the first week of my personal watercolor challenge, and stay tuned to the end to see the real challenge that life presented. I was really feeling frustrated with how little I was painting. So in mid-January, I set myself a personal challenge to help me get back into a daily painting routine. I also wanted to work on simplifying my painting process, and truthfully, I just wanted to create more art. Because I want these paintings to be completed in about an hour or so, I decided to work small, about the size of a photograph. Throughout this challenge, I'll be creating 3 by 5 inch paintings on 4 by 6 inch watercolor paper. I'm working on 140 pound cold press watercolor paper by Fluid. It has some texture, but it's not super textured like many cold press papers are. And for me, that's absolutely perfect. For brushes, I'll be using a small assortment of my favorites. First is a Winsor & Newton 3 8 inch flat. I really like these for filling in background areas and when I need really sharp, straight edges. Then I have this inexpensive one, a Menta R88WR from Royal & Langnickel. It has a nice point on it and it holds a lot of color and water in it. I often use this as my primary blocking in brush. As a painting progresses into finer details, I switch to a smaller round. This one is a Richeson Professional 7000 series, size 6. This is my favorite brush and I hope to get it in a few more sizes in the future. The last brush I have in my set is this small round by Princeton Elite. It's a 3 aught. I thought I might use it for some detail work. I also use a mechanical pencil for my initial sketch in. My favorite is the Quicker Clicker by Pentel with a .05 HB lead. The white pen is a jelly roll pen and it's wonderful for putting in highlights. And last I have a Sakura Micron 01 pen in black. This is what I sign my watercolors with and occasionally I will use it to add details. The other tools I'm using are a roll of half inch wide Japanese artist tape by Nichiban. I use this to mask the edges of my paper and contain the watercolor. It pulls off without tearing the paper and leaves that beautiful clean edge. When I need to erase, I use an old fashioned gum eraser. It leaves no residue on the paper that changes how the watercolor behaves. My watercolor palette is from Mil. I'm not sure if that's the right pronunciation. It has 18 pans, but I've added several half pans of other colors that I occasionally use. The colors I used this week were all from Daniel Smith except for the gouache. The colors used are Payne's Gray, Ultramarine Blue, Mayan Blue Genuine, Quinacridone Magenta, Permanent Red Deep, Hansa Yellow Medium, Hansa Yellow Light, Buff Titanium, Yellow Ochre, Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber, and Windsor Newton Permanent White Gouache. I'll put links to all the supplies that I can in the description box below. Over the years, I have taken thousands of photographs. For painting references, I decided to go back to the oldest photos on my iPad, and I'm simply going to work my way chronologically through the landscape photos. My hope is to use these photographs whether they're a good photograph or not and see if I can create good paintings from them. These early photographs were taken while I was going to nursing school in southwestern Iowa. Fittingly, the very first photos were taken in January. So here we go. Day 1. I took this photo on a chilly gray January day near where I was living in Iowa at the time. I loved the way the creek curved through the ochre fields. I laid in a sketch on a block of paper that is 6 by 8 inches. I divided it in half and have masked the edges off with half inch watercolor tape. I'm using a piece of old watercolor paper over the other section so it doesn't get dirty. I'll also use this to test my colors on. I'm going to start at the top and work my way down. First, I block it in with the lightest background colors. 
I don't think you can see my other palette off to the side, so I'm going to move it over here for a moment. The colors I'm thinking of using for this are ultramarine blue, and this is Mayan blue, which to me already has a nice wintry look to it. I see in the video that it appears much more turquoise green than it is in real life, where it's sort of a steely blue with greenish undertones. I want to add just a little bit of quinacridone magenta. I don't need much of it. I want just a touch to bring it to a purple or slightly pinker shade. I like that pretty well. Let's try mixing the magenta with some ultramarine. Oh, no, that's too purple, so I think I like the Mayan blue mix better. Now I'm going to work on some yellow ochres for the foreground. Yellow ochre can be really potent, so I'm going to dilute it down with some buff titanium. Here it is with the buff added. And then this one is just plain yellow ochre. And this third one has a little blue added, giving it a greenish tinge, and that's going to do very nicely for shadows. We're also going to need some with red tones in it. There, I'm pretty happy with that. Now that I have the colors figured out, I'm going to put this on time-lapse mode and finish the painting. Working on this green placemat is driving me nuts. I can't see what I'm doing, so I'm going to get rid of it. There, that is much better. Day 2. This is another photograph I took in 2006 and was probably taken on the same day as yesterday's. First, I'll lay in a quick sketch. So there's my rough sketch. For today's colors, I think I'll use burnt umber, raw sienna, yellow ochre, buff titanium, Hansa yellow medium, and then we'll have Mayan blue, ultramarine blue, and Payne's gray. I think those will give me most of what I need here.
Day 3 I discovered that I had several blocks of the 4 by 6 inch paper. So much easier to work on. I loved the bottom fields in Iowa on a frosty cold morning. I would be going to nursing clinicals just as the sky would be getting light, and I loved looking at these frosty fields. I struggled a bit with perspective of the field rows on this one, as well as getting the frosty atmosphere. But in the end, it all came together. I'm pretty happy with this one, and I think it might make a beautiful oil painting. Day 4. This was another misty field on a cold March day, with the horizon softened by the frosty air. One of the tricks to creating a successful painting lies in creating a sense of distance. To bring the field forward, its colors are more saturated and brighter, while the distant fields are lighter and the color less saturated. Day 5 was my birthday. I had a lot going on, so I didn't film the painting process. The reference photo came from a series of photos I took on a cool St. Patrick's Day in 2006. I was craving springtime and was driving the back roads in search of some sign of spring. As the sun began to set, I came across this hillside with scattered cedars and the glow of a lovely sunset cascading over the top of the hillside. For this painting, I wanted to see if I could create the sun flare that the camera captured. It's not perfect, but it was a fun one to attempt. Day 6. For most photographs that I take, I can remember exactly where I took them and why. But this is a photograph I have almost no recollection of. It was a stormy day at the end of March 2006, and I took other photos on this day that I do have memories of. Looking at it now, I like the patterns of the frozen creek against the late winter vegetation. This one turned out to be challenging, and I found myself getting bogged down in details and having to redo the values over and over again. Once I got the values and the shadows correct, I needed to go back in and put in the highlights. I used a little bit of white gouache and then a white jelly roll pen to add the frosty bits on the ice. I love what a difference this can make in a painting like this. Day 7. Things did not go to plan. What's that saying? Life is what happens when you're making plans. The day before, we had a day of freezing drizzle, very unusual for Colorado. Unfortunately, on this morning, as I took out the trash, I slipped on the invisible ice and broke both bones of my left arm near the wrist. I also wrenched my left leg pretty badly. I spent most of the day at the emergency room getting patched up and then resting at home. 
Having a snuggly kitty cat to keep me company was the best part of the day. My kids that helped were pretty great too. Between the arm and leg injuries, I felt like a complete invalid for the first couple of weeks. As someone who is very independent, it's humbling to have to ask for and rely on assistance for even the smallest of tasks. As I edit this, it has now been five weeks and I'm healing well and thankfully did not need surgery. Here is a look at all the paintings from the first week of my painting challenge. I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. I'm not sure that I'm simplifying as much as I would like, but with more experience and effort, that should improve. These little watercolors are taking me about an hour and 15 minutes each. Let me know in the comment section below which painting is your favorite. I would also love feedback about how well you like this format. Would you prefer to see these quick painting montage videos, or would you prefer to see a longer, in-depth video of a single larger painting? Or possibly a mix of both types of videos? Would you prefer more commentary or less? Let me know. Thank you in advance for your feedback. It is enormously helpful. I'm so grateful for you taking time out of your busy day to spend time with me here on YouTube. Thank you so much. Wishing you a beautiful day and I'll see you in the next video.